in one of our previous videos, we discussed that central banks were experimenting with their own form of digital currencies to counter the tsunami of cryptocurrencies we are currently witnessing. You see, central banks dislike private decentralized money like Bitcoin because they can't control the supply of it. And it also threatens the sovereignty of their own national currencies. Hence, numerous central banks around the world, from countries like China to Sweden, South Africa to the European Union's ECB, that's European Central Bank, are working on their own state-issued CBDC. So what exactly are these CBDCs or central bank digital currencies? How will they affect you? Let's dive straight in. A CBDC is a digitized version of a domestic currency that's equal to physical cash that you and I use or the reserves that your commercial bank holds at the central bank. I'm sure you're thinking, wait a minute, my money is already digital. From my payment apps to my bank transfers to my credit cards. We're not, after all, physically transferring cash when we pay each other, right? Well, these transfers where we pay each other online are account-based debits and credits that are essentially happening between commercial banks. I pay you, my account is debited, your account is credited, and that settlement takes place between our respective banks. These accounts are not stored at the central bank level. Central bank digital currencies, however, are a direct liability of the central bank and are most likely token-based, where these tokens would be represented on a blockchain established by the central bank. Unlike public blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, where the information recorded is available to all, these are private or permissioned blockchains, which only the central bank and the parties it chooses can have access to. Now, there are two kinds of CBDCs. Wholesale CBDCs that facilitate payments between commercial banks and central banks or entities that hold their accounts with central banks. Now, these have more to do with the infrastructure and the plumbing of the financial system and don't affect you and me directly. The other one is retail CBDCs that can be used by businesses as well as people like you and me. Imagine holding currency in your mobile wallet and the currency is directly issued by the central bank. Now, this could have huge implications for any country. There are so many unbanked or underbanked people in countries like ours and other developing nations around the world. Retail CBDCs could make a strong case for financial inclusion because the central bank could directly transfer funds to the unbanked as long as they have a mobile phone. Imagine funds being transferred for COVID relief and to help people during natural disasters. The central bank could also utilize CBDCs as a tool to influence monetary policy. To spur spending in order to kickstart the economy during recessionary periods, the central bank could theoretically add an expiration date to the money transferred. So you could be compelled to make purchases with that money instead of hoarding it. This would increase the velocity of money in the economy. The opportunities are plenty, but there are a few risks involved as well. If we could all hold our money with the central bank, why hold money at your neighborhood branch of a commercial bank? This could lead to a run on your commercial bank and could have grave consequences for the entire banking industry. Now, it's highly unlikely the central banks would want to risk that because A, a strong banking system is crucial for the financial health of an economy. And B, central banks just aren't designed to deal with millions of retail customers. So the approach is most likely to be two-tiered. Issue the CBDC to the banks who then issue it to the retail customers. This would allow the authorities the room to experiment with this new financial tool without disrupting the entire banking model. Technology is changing money as we know it, so let's embrace it with open arms. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.